Hi everybody, today we're going to look at some review problems from chapter 7. This particular video is going to focus on universal gravity. I'll be using the two equations that you can see up here. First, we can describe any force felt between two objects because of gravity with this equation where we have the mass of the two objects, m1 and m2, and we have their distance of separation squared in the denominator. Then we also have to multiply that by the universal gravitational constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 uh, newtons meter squared per kilogram squared. We had a variation of this equation where if you take out one of the masses, you can arrive at an equation that looks like this, where now what we're doing is we're just talking about what is the gravitational field uh, when I'm near a very massive object. And so that's why I've switched it over to a large M. So this is where we would get our 9.8 meters per second squared number for Earth. And we're going to take a look at that a little bit closer here. Let's start off a problem where we're going to have a planet, and I'm going to make up some numbers here. I'm going to say that the radius of this planet is going to be equal to 8.5 times 10 to the 6 meters. And then I'm also going to say that the mass of the planet is equal to, let's go with something like uh, 1.1 times 10 to the 25 kilograms. So those numbers I just made up. I'm also going to take a look at a couple objects that are on the surface here of the planet. So let's say that this first object over here is um, a person that maybe is 100 kilograms. And down here we're going to have some other object. Perhaps this is a vehicle or something like that. And it's going to be 1,200 kilograms. And these two objects are going to be separated by three meters. So I've really identified three different objects in this problem. I have the massive planet. I've given the radius of the planet and the mass of it. I've given the mass of these two smaller objects, and I've said that they are separated from one another by three meters, and they are both resting at the uh, surface of the planet. Let's first take a peek at what the gravitational attraction is between the two small objects. So I want to know how much force due to gravity is felt between these two small objects. In my example, I said that this was a person in a vehicle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just plug in the information that I know. And I'm going to say that the force that's felt between these two objects is equal to the universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared multiplied by the mass of the two objects. So I had one was 100 kilograms, the other was 1,200 kilograms. Doesn't matter which one I put where because mathematically it's going to come out the same. Then I need to divide by the distance of separation between the objects. Remember that distance of separation is from the center of mass to the center of mass. And so I'm just saying here that it was three meters. I can take a look at what I have here as far as my units go. Inside of the parentheses down in the denominator I have meters but it's actually getting squared. So there's square meters in a deno denominator. I had square meters up there. I have kilograms squared in a denominator up here and then I also had kilograms and kilograms up there in the numerator. So the only unit I'm going to be left with is newtons, and that's good because we are trying to find a force. Then I've plugged these numbers in, and I find that the force is equal to 8.89 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. So a very small amount, but that's what we would expect. Because remember, the gravitational force is generally very small unless you're dealing with massive objects. For the next part in the problem, I want to look at what the gravitational field looks like, so little g, at the surface of this planet. In order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and use this other equation that's up here, and I'm going to say that little g, which typically is the number that we use 9.8 meters per second squared for on Earth, uh, so in this case we're going to find it. So little g for this particular planet is equal to big G, again 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meters squared 
per kilogram squared multiplied by the mass of the planet, the number that I made up before, 1.1 times 10 to the 25 kilograms. And that is divided by the distance of separation between uh, the location I'm interested in and the center of mass of the planet. So remember that whenever you're doing that type of problem, it turns out that the distance of separation is actually the radius of the planet out to the surface. So I'm going to use the distance of separation as 8.5 times 10 to the 6. That's in meters and it gets squared. Again, I can see that my units are going to cancel out. This time though, I'm only going to be able to cancel one of the kilograms that's in the denominator over here with the kilogram that's over here. So the number that I'm going to get after I plug this all into my calculator is G is equal to 10.1 and then up here if you look carefully I have newtons per kilogram as my units. I'll remind you that a newton is equal to a kilogram meter per second squared and so the kilogram that's here in the newton is going to actually cancel out and my final answer is going to be G equals 10.1 meters per second squared. As an extension to this problem, I'm going to calculate the weight of the individual that's located here using this new value of G. So in this particular case, on this planet, we would say that FG, or the weight of the person, is equal to the mass of the person times the gravitational field. So in this case, we have FG is equal to 100 kilograms multiplied by our gravitational field of 10.1 meters per second squared and so on this planet this particular individual would happen to have a weight of just over a thousand newtons. I'm going to go ahead and leave that number aside for just a moment from here, let's take a look at what we would have gotten if we had used this first equation over here uh, with that same information. So I'm going to use the 100 kilogram person and I'm going to use the planet. So we're going to come over and we're going to say that the force felt between these two objects is going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared times the mass of the individual, 100 kilograms times the mass of the planet, which again I said was 1.1 times 10 to the 25 kilograms. All of this is going to be divided by the distance of separation between the center of mass to center of mass. So for this we're going to say that we need to go all the way down to the center of the planet to find its center of the mass, so we're going to use the radius. And then technically you have some person standing there, and sure, they have some sort of radius associated with them, but we're going to say that that's negligible for this particular problem, so we're not going to include it. We're not going to try to take that information into account. So I'm just going to say my distance of separation is the radius of the planet. Taking a look at my units again here. With this particular calculation, I find that the force felt between the individual and the planet is 1,015 newtons. And as you might expect, these two numbers should be identical. In fact, the only difference between them is some rounding error that has come up as I've been doing my calculations. The last problem I want to look at is the base case style problems where we can make an easy comparison between two situations without having to go through the full mathematics. So we're going to take a look here at Earth where at the surface we have a gravitational field of 9.8 meters per second squared. As you're well aware there's a big push right now to find Earth-like planets out in the universe. We can say that perhaps some astronomers run across one where they think that the radius of this planet is equal to two Earth radii and they've done some work and perhaps they find the mass of this planet to be equal to 10 Earth masses. If I want to know what is the G, what is the gravitational field like at the surface of this planet, 
I can go through and use universal gravity and just calculate it from first principles. I can also just make a comparison back uh, to Earth by looking at the equations. So the base case is Earth, so I'm going to have that G on Earth is equal to, and then I plug in a 1 for any variable that can actually change. And so my mass is one Earth mass, my radius is one Earth radius. I don't actually need to worry about the universal gravitational constant because that value is not going to change from the left side to the right side. So again, we're just making a comparison. We're going to find out a factor. By what factor is the gravitational field going to potentially change? So now I come over and I treat this situation over here very similarly, except I plug in the factor by which each of the ma you know the mass and the radius change here. So over on this side of things, I find that the g is going to start looking something like uh, a mass of 10 divided by a radius of 2 squared. So I took the 2 for the radius and I put it into where the equation would go and the 10 for the 10 earth masses and put it in where it goes. So this is going to simplify over here to being a 10 divided by 4 or a 2.5. So that's the factor that G is going to change by. So does that mean that the G over here is going to be 2.5 meters per second squared? It does not. It is the factor again. So if I really want to know what is the G right here, it's going to be the original value was 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by this factor that I just discovered, 2.5. So G on this new planet ought to be something about 24.5 meters per second squared. Hopefully that was helpful and hopefully that uh, will get you where you need to be for re remembering this material. As usual, if you think you got it, let your computer know.